Okay, today we are going to make the mandibular special tray for final impression. And as you can see, I have got a, special, a cast ready here, primary impression cast. And I have made two lines. If you see carefully, you will see that there are... Alright, I need to get this in focus for you. You will see that there are two lines. I have got a black line down there. And then I have a green line up there. So there are two lines. One is at the depth, the black is at the depth of the vestibule, and the green one is slightly above, about 1, 1.5 millimeters above the depth of the vestibule. And I've ran this all through my buckle shelf area, right? And I've marked out my retromolar pad for you and gone into the lingual, where also I have marked the same thing. Now, in the, in the lingual anterior portion, I've opened out a phenal notch. You can see it corresponding to the frenum, right? And come back to this side. I'm sorry, I've come back to the wrong side, all right. Okay, this side. Again, the lingual, you can see the retromolar pad, right? You can see the retromolar pad. Hmm. Now, on this side, all right. The retromolar pad here. And then you can also see the buckle shelf area right and you can see how it comes over to the anterior here All right. so we have this and I showed you all the landmarks in the areas now I'm just going to go out a little bit here so you can see so as I told you before light cure uh, sheets come as light cure acrylic resin come as sheets usually wrapped in a kind of paper like this uh, cloth okay they come in uh, in one shape at least the brand that we buy comes in one shape it would use for both upper or lower you can see I have placed some wax over the crest of the ridge because it was rather a sharp and irregular crest so I've placed some material I've not really done any other uh, work I need to do also a little bit of a block out in this region in this region, okay. Let me zoom it in for you. Sorry, okay. Ah, oh, yes. If I were to show you, this part needs to have a little undercut in this region. There's a little undercut, so you need to have a little bit of a block out. There's also an air bubble that I've tried to block off with wax, right? So I'm going to just add a little wax in this so it's blocked out on both sides and then go ahead with the construction of my tray okay okay so I've got my Bunsen burner it's on I'm sorry my uh, Hanos torch it's on and uh, so keep it to the side here I have my base plate wax which I'm going to use I have my acrylic resin which I want to keep it covered for a bit so it doesn't start to cure I'm just going to use this knife, very interesting one because it's got a posterior spoon, right? And uh, it's very interesting to use this. And uh, it's quite nice instrument. So I'm just going to use this very quickly. Okay. Got my wax. I want to place some here. Bring it in a bit see what I'm doing. Let me just change this, adjust it a little bit. Okay, so you can see too much. Yeah, it's better. So you can see what I'm doing. I heat up my instrument. I'm going to just add very gently melt in my wax into that position. Okay, just want to give it a little bit of relief. I want to use this flame on the other side so I don't block your view. Mm -hmm. All right. I think all of you can see that. So 
So you can see the amount of wax I have used, right? I've used not much, just a little under that area. I just want it to be straight, I'm cutting off any excess that is there. Yeah, I take it off with the, you can see that, all right? Yeah, see that? Taking off the excess with a non, a cold instrument. I want to take off my wax near the tray border because I don't want wax on the tray border. Right. Of course, that wax does not stick to the acrylic resin because it is not self-cure. Self-cure acrylic resins, because they generate exothermic heat as part of their reaction, you get the wax sticking on, all right? But in this case, no. I also want to clear off my retromolar pad. I don't want to, I want to have some amount of pressure on that. I don't want to relieve it in any sense. I'm just going to take off the wax from there. Yeah. So that's it. Just a little bit to block off the undercut. All right. I'll do the same thing on this side. Take a bit of wax. Right. Come to this side. Soften the wax a little bit. And just for it to adapt on there. All right. Just for it to adapt on there. And then start off with my. Okay, let me just show you this. All right, this you can use the wax into the into the spoon. I'm sorry, into the spoon here. If you're really interested in pouring, okay, want to heat it over your flame, it starts to melt. Remove this wax so that you can actually appreciate the spoon effect. All right. Just heat it up. Now you see the wax in the spoon has melted, right? And you can just kind of pour it in. Just pour it in like that. Yeah. The problem when you pour like this is it tends to go into the sulcus. Right? Can you see that it's uh, running into the sulcus, which is not a very great thing. Okay. But the advantage is that if you use this, all right. I think this is more clear. Yeah. If you use this, you get a thin layer. I'm going to take off that. Just wanted to show you what happens if you run the material across like that. I want to take off that because I don't want it to run into my vestibule. I don't want it to run into my vestibule. Running into the vestibule means that the tray will be further away from the tissue than it should be and the border molding is going to end up thick. Okay, so just, yeah, removing all the material from there. And go with it like how we did it before. Put a piece of wax, heat up your instrument, and just press down. This way it doesn't flow too much because the material doesn't completely liquefy, it just softens up into a plastic mass. <clears throat> okay. So it doesn't, it doesn't get too runny. All right, once you've added material like that, once you've added material like that, then you want to remove, keeping it parallel. You want to just block the undercut. So wait for a few seconds. It's still a bit hot. Wait for a few seconds for it to cool down. Then once it's cooled down, you want to just run it like this. I hope you can see what I'm doing there. Let me get this angle right. Okay, all right. Just run it parallelly like that, and then remove with a cold instrument. You want to remove this. You don't want any wax in the vestibule. This is one thing that I always tell students: don't put wax flowing into the vestibule. It doesn't help. Okay. I also don't want wax along my green line. I'm going to open up here. I hope you can see that. All right? I'm going to just cut so that I don't have wax along 
my green line so I want my green line to be free of wax yeah. there we go you can see that the green line is free of wax and that's how I want to keep it I don't want it to be too blocked now at this point I just want to smoothen a little bit I see some irregularity there in the wax just want to smoothen it a bit okay I want to add in my my acrylic resin so I'm going to off and let this flame be on the side take my light cure acrylic resin yeah. place it and I place it obviously there is a lot of space in the posterior part so you want to just simply the easy way to do it <clears throat> like I have been taught by most of my teachers just to cut a line in the center that makes <clears throat> it easier to adapt the material <clears throat> like that. no, 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 no. that's okay okay having put the slit I just want to, with my finger, gently press and adapt the material onto the cast, gently. You don't want to stretch the material, you just want to adapt it, okay? Even in the anterior portions, simply adapt. And then with an instrument, like we did for the maxillary, just cut along the outer edge of the cast, okay? I like to use an instrument like a wax knife maybe to get into that get into gently get into the vestibule yeah just getting into the vestibule there gently yeah here also I hope you can see that gently gently going into going into the vestibule like that okay and then you want to cut off this excess so you cut off the excess cut off the excess along the depth along the depth like that here also you want to cut off the vestibule cut off the material along the depth I seem to have torn this, you know, with light cure, you can always build it back, so that's really good. So you cut this along this, you can see that, yeah, cut this along this. Three stars, right? Yeah. Just jar the door dock. So we're back here with uh, removing this material off from the inner portion. And, yeah, and we want to stick to the extension of our green line. That, okay, so I'm taking off all my acrylic resin from there. Try to zoom it in a bit. Okay, okay. Well, I hope. Even on this side, yeah, okay, 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 I want to get it there, the posterior part, move that posterior part off, right, right, and now, I want to go on to the buckle here. So I want to cut it across the retromolar pad. Go into this area. I want to stick to the position of our green line. Okay, so you can see 
the black line is visible now and I'm going to just carve it along so I am at the green line yes okay you can see the green line there oops yeah I'm going to go ahead here I'm going to go across here. I'm doing it clearly enough for you. See, I just moved the material off. I'm going in here again. I'm along my green line, right? anterior portion I need to reduce some more so you can see it's kind of stuck at the black line level take it off a little bit okay now I'm at my green line all right okay I want to come here I say take notch area okay maybe this way this way all right I say take notch area I want to cut this Seems to have exposed a little bit of my green line there, so I'm going to have to come back and fix that with a little bit of material. Fix that, okay. That's good. I'm going to adapt this one on so it doesn't lose out. Okay, I'm going to just adapt it, remove the material from the posterior part here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cut that. I also want to open up my lingual phenyl area. You can see that I've opened it up there. And see I'm sure that it has come to the green line level here also on this side also I'm going to remove material if you have a look at it yeah I hope you can see that it's all over even on this side it's all over at the green line level okay now having done this okay some small adjustment having done this there are two things we need to make in this one is the handle so let's zoom out a bit here's the handle like before we're going to need the acrylic resin together on the 
on the acrylic just some grooves okay don't make it too deep or adapt it onto this now your handle needs to be the size as your teachers would have told you need to be the size of two or four sentinel sizes depending on what type of a handle you want to make now I go with a regular old-fashioned handle okay so I cut this off for me I think this is good enough two center and sizes with handle the important part of this handle compared to the uh, anterior handle uh, upper handle is that this is vertical it's in the same position okay and I told you last time you take an instrument let me just zoom it in for you okay yeah take an instrument and you can just tug the material and just tug it in so it kind of holds okay it in okay even in the posterior part okay so this is my handle and like before you like to have something to hold it by so you're gonna hold it like this so obviously you need something here that is going to be grouped this way right and you want something here that's going to be grooving you want to hold it like this you need something to groove it ah, this way oh, I'm sorry I should show you this yeah this way okay so you have something to hold it like this and from the inside you have a inner groove so you have a groove here like a groove here like this see that and from the inside you have a groove like that so that's your handle now I need something also here called finger rest it's important to have finger rest when you have finger rest it makes your fingers rest on the rest so what's the big deal when you make impressions the material does not flow over the edge and touch your finger because finger is away from the part of the tray the finger rest gives you just that Give it a nice finger is there. I'm going to make another one quickly for the other side. I want to get these quickly into a into a light curing unit. Okay, I want to put some grooves on this as well, like you put there. Yep, just gonna add a finger rest there like that. You want to keep your finger rest on the crest of the ridge so that it doesn't extend into the side. And like I did before, I'm gonna just tug it in. Okay, just tug it in. I know it looks a little messy at this point, but you possibly can polish it off uh, once it is cured. Okay, so here also I just want to tug it in. And even on the inside here, I want to tug it in. do these edges up and it looks nice here also to do the edges up okay so I have my special tray ready to go into the light curing unit or otherwise as we call it here light box with a handle that looks like the central incisors you see it's a bit tilted now I want to get it straight you stay straight there okay stay there stay straight okay and I have two finger rests when you make the impression not the bottom holding step even the bottom holding it helps you but then most importantly when you do make the impression 
at that point let me just get this okay at that point you have material all over the border and when you make the the border molding material and when you make the impression if you don't hold here if you're holding on the tray proper like that the material may not flow all over the border may interfere with your finger so that's the reason why we tell you to use a finger rest so you can support your finger here is away from the border and the border gets molded fine thank you for watching it's going to go into the light box and come back here keep looking